change after a crash kills the parents of four children. The change they want to see coming up. Audio of outgoing President Donald Trump talking to a top Georgia election official. What the president was asking for and the potential fallout next. Plus, his recent move to San Antonio leading to a tragic end with a positive identification on human remains found at Fort Sam Houston. And it's been sunny to start the new year, but subtle changes are around the corner that'll make it a little bit more cloudy. And we're talking rain chances coming up soon. Pet owner alert. Some dog and cat food is recalled after 28 dogs have died. Coming up, what to look out for. The news at five starts right now. At first at five, it is rare that the police chief and the police union publicly agree, but it happened today just a few hours ago. The San Antonio Police Union and Police Chief William McManus held a joint news conference outside of public safety headquarters. The subject? The Fix SAPD campaign. It's a petition drive to overturn two parts of state law, which would weaken the police union's power. Garrett Berger live with how the union found an unlikely ally in Chief McManus. Well, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus has long butted heads with the current union president, Mike Helley. But with Helley stepping down and the new union president, John Danny Diaz, coming in, McManus says they've turned a corner and they'll be working closely together on issues. That first issue appeared to be offering his support against the Fix SAPD campaign, a petition drive which threatens the union's power. McManus stood behind Diaz as the incoming president accused Fix SAPD members, among other things, of claiming they were with the police department, being physically aggressive to get signatures, and saying they have the support of Chief McManus. The campaign wants to get rid of Chapter 174 in state law, which gives police the power to collectively bargain and get a union contract, and Chapter 143, known as civil service, the basis upon which much of that contract is built. Now, McManus has been outspoken in his opposition to the current disciplinary process and protections in the police contract, which allow many officers he fires to end up back on the force. And while the chief did not denounce the Fix SAPD campaign, he did say he doesn't oppose collective bargaining. And what he wants to see changed in the union contract can happen at the negotiating table. And I'm confident that as we go forward uh, in the negotiations, which I will not be part of, by the way, uh, I'm confident that as we go forward in these negotiations, that hopefully we will reach a, a uh, amenable decision on the issues that I have concern with. The union contract expires this fall. Now, negotiations for a new contract are supposed to start this month, but no dates have been set as of yet. Now, we also spoke to members of the Fix SAPD campaign who denied being aggressive when gathering signatures or saying that they were with the police department. They wouldn't say exactly where they're at with the petition drive, but they did say they have tens of thousands of signatures at this point. Now, if they get enough, we could be seeing these issues on the May ballot for the city elections. Live at Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And of course, we'll continue to follow it. Thank you, Garrett. Well, something needs to change. That's what one organization is saying following a crash that killed the parents of four children. It happened last night at the 1200 block of Bandera Road near Diamond K Trail in Lotus. Cops Metro Alliance calls the area a problem spot. Stephen Cavazos with why they say this crash is a wake up call. We need to address the factors that caused this accident. Steve Mendoza says it's something he and others are fighting to change. Mendoza is a member with Cops Metro Alliance. He says the organization has made it their mission to help create safer roads. He believes last night's crash was something that should never happen. As a Helotas resident, we're really saddened for this people. Helotas police tell us four children were traveling in a van with their parents on Bandera near Diamond Cade Trail, and a female driver in a truck was heading southbound. According to police, the driver of that van had cut across Bandera before it was hit by that truck. Both of the parents inside died on impact. Mendes believes the road is a problem that needs to be addressed. The driver of the truck and the four children were taken to University Hospital with injuries. Police say the family were visiting from out of state. Although they say the crash is an accident, it is still being investigated. Mendes says it's not the first time the road has raised concerns. He says speed is a major problem. 
traffic needs to slow down. There's a highway going through a very rural area. He says the organization is working to bring more attention to the area. And this hopes to see speed bumps added and speed reduced. He says change is long overdue. We will continue addressing this with the city and especially uh, excessive speed. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. A spokeswoman for the city of Alotus tells us they are having conversations with TxDOT to discuss ways to improve roads and make them safer for drivers. New at five, human remains found last month at Fort Sam Houston have, by now, have been identified as a man who had just moved to San Antonio. JBSA telling us dental records helped to identify the man as Juan Santiago. Officials say that he moved to San Antonio from Massachusetts in June. According to JBSA, Santiago was reported missing shortly after he moved to the Alamo City. He had no military affiliations. Santiago's remains were found on December 27th by people who were walking near Salado Creek in the Northeast past that post. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations will now continue looking into Santiago's death. Meanwhile, San Antonio police asking for help in finding the person who shot and killed a Fort Sam Houston drill instructor. This is 30 year old Sergeant Jessica Ann Mitchell. She was on holiday leave when it happened. Police found her white Dodge Charger near I-10 and West Avenue about 3 a.m. on New Year's Day. The vehicle had multiple bullet holes on the driver's side door and window. Mitchell taken to the hospital where she later died. We're told the suspect may have been driving a red car with damage to the passenger side. If you have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call SAPD's homicide unit. That number on your screen right now, 210, or it's supposed to be on your screen. It's not. The number is 210-207-7635. We are learning more information about the two men arrested for allegedly firing a gun outside of a Southside home over the weekend. 37-year-old Carlos Javier Salas Gomez and 43-year-old Armando Espinosa both facing charges in that Saturday night incident. Police tell us the pair were firing off a gun in the 3200 block of Stephen Foster. When officers got there, investigators say one of the suspects pointed a gun at the officer. So that officer fired one shot. No one was hit. Both suspects were arrested at gunpoint. Police found a loaded gun and multiple shell casings at that scene. A telephone call between President Donald Trump and a top election official in Georgia sending shockwaves through Capitol Hill. During the hour long call, President Trump is heard demanding that the Georgia Secretary of State find him enough votes to overturn Joe Biden's victory in that state. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has audio of that call. It's a remarkable recording. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have, because we won the state. President Donald Trump heard pressuring Georgia's top election official, Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. On the call, Trump is repeatedly heard pushing him to find enough votes to flip Joe Biden's win in the Peach State. The president at times lobbying vague legal threats if Raffensperger did not comply. You know what they did and you're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal, that's a criminal offense. But the votes in Georgia have already been counted three times, including an extensive hand recount and signature match audit. The results unchanged. Joe Biden won Georgia. Yet on that call, Trump insisting he won, citing conspiracy theories and baseless claims of voter fraud. Raffensperger telling Good Morning America the president is misinformed and the election was fair and accurate. The data that he has is just plain wrong. The backlash swift. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. But that's not stopping 140 House Republicans and at least 12 Republican senators from challenging the Electoral College results when Congress convenes on Wednesday. The move is mostly political theater. They don't have the votes to overturn Biden's victory. And as the president sows doubt on election integrity in Georgia, he's holding a rally in the state on the eve of all important Senate runoff races there, whose winners will decide whether Republicans or Democrats will hold the majority in the Senate. President-elect Joe Biden is also campaigning for Democrats. Meanwhile, the district attorney in Georgia's Fulton County is not ruling out the possibility of filing state charges against President Trump or his aides who were involved in that call. Some legal experts have questioned if the president violated any election interference laws. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News in Washington.
What a beautiful day outside today. Taking a look at live cam just before the sun sets here. Hard to believe that just a few days ago, parts of our viewing area were getting snow because we're currently at 75 degrees at the airport. And we do have a couple of weather watcher, watcher temperatures that I want to talk about, specifically the one out near Lakey. Uh, 72 degrees out in Joanne's backyard in Lakey. Again, Lakey saw quite a bit of snow just a few days ago. 74 in Shirts, 77 in Divine. It's feeling fine in Divine. 77 in Holotus, 74 in Seguin, and 75 in New Braunfels. We do have a couple of cold fronts to talk about with some rain chances on the way, so I'll be back in a few minutes with a look ahead. Steve? I saw you got to take in some of that snow. I was I was jealous. Thank you, Sarah. There's some road work we want to let you know about right now. McCullough Avenue from Oblate Drive to Shannon Street will be closed over the next few months for construction. It's part of a 2017 bond project, which was approved by voters. The goal is to help reduce flooding in the area. Detour signs will be posted to help drivers navigate through the road closure. Work is expected to be completed here sometime in the spring. New at five every year, many people make losing weight one of their New Year's resolutions. Turns out shedding a few pounds could better protect you against COVID-19 as well. Myra Arthur explains obesity, one of the top underlying health conditions associated with coronavirus death. Obese patients who contract COVID-19 are 74% more likely to end up in the ICU and 48% more likely to die. But why? Dr. Sanjay Gupta says it's partly due to how our bodies are built. Our diaphragm is one of the major muscles that helps with breathing. Breathe in and the diaphragm contracts and the lungs expand to take in oxygen. But if you're obese, fat in the abdomen can push on the diaphragm, limiting how much air you take in. And obesity is a precursor to other health conditions like heart and lung disease, diabetes, an impaired immune system, chronic inflammation, and blood that's more likely to clot. Add COVID-19 to that and the risk goes up even more. See, the cells that line your blood vessels and regulate blood flow, they are known as endothelial cells and they can become damaged when you're infected with coronavirus. Dr. Gupta says fat cells themselves may also be more susceptible to coronavirus. The virus attaches to cells in our bodies through the ACE2 receptor. That's a protein that is on the surface of many cells. It turns out fat tissue has a high level of ACE2 receptors, thus acting in some ways like a reservoir for the virus. Regardless of your weight, you can reduce your COVID-19 infection risk by wearing a mask, social distancing, and washing your hands. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. Pet owner alert. Certain dog and cat food has been recalled after 28 dogs have died. Coming up, what to look out for. New at five, a pet food warning. The Food and Drug Administration recalling some popular dry pet foods after 28 dogs died and several more became sick. 12 your sites, Marilyn Moritz on what pet parents should look out for. It's today's recall roundup. Is this your pet's food? Certain bags of sport mix dog and cat food are recalled. The FDA says it is aware of at least 28 deaths of dogs that ate the food and is investigating. Tests showed the food contains potentially fatal levels of aflatoxin. The recall involves sport mix Energy Plus, premium high energy, and original cat dry foods with expiration dates of March 2nd and 3rd, 2022. If your pet has eaten the food, contact your veterinarian. <laughs> Check your freezer. Nestle has recalled 46 tons of Lean Cuisine meals because they may contain bits of white plastic. These are baked chicken with stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy with a best before date of October 2021. Return them or toss them out. <laughs> Heads up, 182,000 ceiling fans sold at the Home Depot last year are recalled after dozens of reports of blades flying off while the fan is spinning. These are Hampton Bay ceiling fans, 54-inch Mara models. Contact the manufacturer, King of Fans, for a new one. <laughs> 
and Parent Alert. Target is recalling nearly 300,000 infant rompers. The snaps can pop off and pinch, cut, or even choke a baby. These are Cloud Island rompers sold in about two dozen styles. Parents, return them and get your money back. If you need more information about any of those recalls, head on over to KSAT.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Ready to read now on KSAT.com, a popular burger spot is expanding here in San Antonio. Burger Boy, a KSAT favorite, announcing a fourth location set up to open in the spring. The Bates Special, oh, The Working yeah. Man. Working Man. I've been there once yeah. or twice. This one will be located at Bitters and 281. According to a press release, the new location highly requested. The original Burger Boy on the St. Mary's Strip, not far from the KSAT Studios, opened back in the 1980s. It's almost warm enough to want one of those orange freezes. Oh my goodness, and you can smell it whenever anybody has <laughs> Burger Boy in the station. Yes. <laughs> and you can you smell can. it. It's the fries. It's the fries. The fries are good and the prices too. All right, Burger Boy, enough of you. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with the time lapse. So this evening, we're starting to see the sunset and it's gonna be a beautiful sunset too. Uh, we'll have clear skies throughout the evening. Today, we got up to 77 degrees. That's impressive for two reasons. One being that our average high temperature is usually 62. So that's 15 degrees above average. It's also impressive that we got that warm because look at this morning's low, 37 degrees. We were able to rise from start to finish by 40 degrees during the day. The reason for that, the dry air, dry air cools down and warms up really quickly. And tonight we'll have temperatures falling pretty quickly as well. We'll already be near 50 degrees by midnight with northeast winds at five miles per hour. So a clear and calm evening. But by the start of the day tomorrow, you may need to notice a few clouds out there, especially south and east of I-35. Much like this morning, we could have some fog in areas like uh, Cardins County, also near Cuero and near Pleasanton in Atascosa County. During the day, it should be fairly sunny, but in the afternoon and evening hours, we'll actually see skies uh, start to get a little cloudy, uh, and by the evening hours, we'll have overcast skies. So tomorrow, a good day for the most part. We'll just be seeing those increasing clouds in the second part of the day. 45 to wake up tomorrow, so a little bit warmer than how we started off the day today. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour will increase Humidity, it won't necessarily be perceptible, but you will be able to see those clouds by the evening work their way in. 68 for the high temperature, so cooler than today, and then cloudy in the evening with temperatures in the 50s. So we're in between weather patterns right now, but we can already see our next rain chance and cold front. Look out to the Pacific Northwest. An upper level low pressure system is producing some rain and snow out there, and this upper level uh, low is going to move to the east and form a cold front as it does so. Uh, by Wednesday, we'll see that cold front move through San Antonio. It's going to be a weak cold front, not doing too much to our temperatures, but it will provide us a chance for isolated showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder. The chance of rain on Wednesday is only 30%. Much better rain chances east of San Antonio toward the Houston area. Then we'll have a bit of a quiet weather pattern until Sunday, when a more potent upper level low will be moving to uh, San Antonio and across the state of Texas. In fact, this particular computer model shows a good chance for rain on Sunday and even some hill country snow. Now it is too early to determine which areas have snow, if snow is even going to be possible, but I wanted to show you one of these computer models to show you that this one's going to be a little bit more potent. Not only is it going to bring us better rain chances, but it's also going to drop temperatures quite a bit. So again, this is Sunday of this upcoming weekend. So rain chances this week, 30% on Wednesday, and then we won't see any rain on on Thursday and Friday. Probably won't see much rain on Saturday either, only a 10% chance. But on Sunday, we'll probably see this rain chance go up as we get a little bit more clarity on the weekend forecast. But for now, it'll be about a 40% chance for scattered showers. Again, tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day, a high temperature near 70 degrees, 60 degrees, 68 degrees rather. And then on Wednesday, we'll have a high temperature near 70 with the passage of that cold front bringing us isolated showers. And then look how potent that next cold front is. We'll probably only be in the 40s for most of the day on Sunday and have a light freeze by Monday morning of next week. So again, subtle changes in the forecast over the next couple of days, but we'll be looking toward the weekend for the biggest weather change. A nice variety there. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I sarcastically say the temperatures to start this year have been really hard to 
I deal yeah, with. Yeah, you need a little support yeah. there. Speaking of hard to deal with, yeah. the Cowboys ended their season much like it began, Greg. No, they, Close but no cigar. The reason why they hired Mike McCarthy because of his experience yeah. in big games. So what was he thinking on two calls during this game? He will let us know. And did the Eagles tank last night? Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy's in-game management and called into question again, this time during another must-win game against the Giants in order to have a shot at the playoffs. The first, not going for two points after Ezekiel Elliott's touchdown made it 20-15 to at the time in the third quarter. More importantly, not challenging Dante Pettis' 10-yard catch that set up a 50-yard field goal that gave the Giants a 23-19 point lead when the television replays appear to show it was incomplete. What made the fact he didn't throw the challenge flag is that he did it in the playoff game on Des Bryant's controversial catch back in 2014 and won when he was a Packers head coach. So why not now? The, the catch, um, it was, you know, obviously down in our area and, uh, you know, way the receiver turned to me and, um, and the information we felt, we just felt it was too close. You know, we, we felt it was a kind of a bang, bang uh, type, you know, situation. And, and the fact of the matter, we were in a, you know, we were in a tight game. And uh, the three timeouts was, you know, was obviously of, of high value there. So we just didn't think there was enough information to overturn it. And as a result, the Dallas Cowboys finished season 6-10 and 10 with Washington win. Now we'll pick 10th in the NFL draft. Big controversy in the Washington 20-14 win over the Philadelphia Eagles. Many fans and former and current Giant players are accusing the Eagles of throwing the game for two reasons. Improving their draft status to six and not allowing the Giants into the playoffs. Not taking the field goal on fourth and goal late in the third quarter that would have tied the game at 17 all. Then benching quarterback Jalen Hurts, replacing him with third stringer Nate Sudfeld, trailing only by three in the fourth quarter quarters. Sudfeld hadn't even played in two years, quickly turned the ball over twice. Head coach Doug Peterson under fire. Yes, I was coaching and we had to win. Uh, yes, that was my decision solely. Um, Nate has uh, obviously been here for uh, four years um, and uh, I felt that uh, he, he deserved an opportunity to uh, to get some to get some snaps and um, if, if there's anything out there that, that thinks that I was not trying to win the game. I mean, you know, Ertz is out there, Brandon Graham's out there, Darius Slay's out there. You know, all our top guys are still on the field at the end. So uh, we were we were going to win the game. And you got a feel for the Houston Texans. Another disappointing last second loss this time to the Tennessee Titans after rookie kicker Sam Sloman doinks in a 37 yard game winning field goal with no time on the clock. The Texans fall 41 38, finish 4 and 12 in the season. Now the Texans are one of 16 in the NFL looking for a new head coach. As after the Jaguars, the Chargers, and the Jets fired their head coaches today. And coming up at six, what's happened to the Spurs? Great start. Not so much right now. Yeah. It hurt yesterday. It that sure was a did. bad loss. <laughs> that was a very bad loss. Yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll be right back.